here we are. I started last year a second podcast called Mind Under Matter with me and a comic friend, um, f- philosophical and, and comedy podcast. And we've often joked about how um, how how the 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 brain sometimes the 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 lawyers for the um i'm a failure or i can't do it side of your brain are all wearing suits and just a crack team <laughs> of of compiling mounds and mounds of evidence and then the positive uh i can do it part of the brain is just throwing paper airplanes and spitballs and yep. doesn't have their case together. <laughs> yep. And is, is there, would you say that there's some evolutionary underpinnings with that going on as well with, with some of the kind of error management um, stuff of negativity bias? Yeah. And- um, there's this whole realm like evolutionary psychologist, psychologists show things like, um, if you have two options, a positive interpretation of something or a negative, and all things being equal, people are coming up about 50-50, stress people, time pressure them, whatever, and the default is the negative one. You get mm. people during periods of stress, and you are much, much more moved in the direction of protecting your assets so that you don't lose them rather than doing what you need to do to acquire more of them. You get this sort of negativity bias. You are much, much better. You and every human and non-human primates that's been tested with in figuring out has somebody broken a social contract? Has somebody broken a social contract by being nicer than they were supposed to be? Or have they broken it by being lousier than we're supposed to be? And the more convoluted and complicated the story is, everybody has trouble figuring out whether the person actually carried through their promise. We're much better at picking up the violations that go in the bad direction. We just sort of have this cognitive gamble that we seemingly have evolved for, which is to often be better safe than sorry. And when we're stressed, just really tilting in that direction. Hmm. Um, what about, what have you seen any of that work? Sometimes I've seen people speculate that, um, that what some people consider, uh, that it, basically that depressed people sometimes view some aspects of life more accurately. And it, 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 I, I never know what to make of of some of that when I hear it because because I, I had a very um, wholesome Midwestern upbringing where just every house you go into the walls are just covered in platitudes and and things <laughs> and every, everyone's cheery wholesome Midwestern it's not as much as it was 30 years ago or whatever but um, I I just it just never resonated <laughs> with me and so uh, so when I first heard some of that work I was like maybe I'm just seeing things more clearly and that's why I feel this way and then and then there's other times where I can absolutely tell that and and I see in others where uh, d- just the the feeling of depression and hopelessness is delusional it's it's not it's not representative of reality well glad glad to hear you uh, citing the the neurobiology of Garrison Keeler and all the consequences of that. Yeah, you bring up what seems like a total contradiction. Okay, depressions about emotions and brain chemistry and genes and all of that. But as we just went over, it's a disorder of distorted thinking. You see things mm-hmm. being more negative than the actual distorted thinking, inaccurate thinking. Yet, there's the soundbite that you bring up that in some domains, people with depression are actually more accurate assessors of what's going on. They're more cognitively correct rather than being distorted. Okay, so these are completely mutually contradictory, but they're not. When are people with depression really, really bad at seeing reality for what it is when it concerns them? 
and when it's emotionally heavy duty and it's salient. When are they very, very good at seeing the world for what it is when it's some detached issue off at a distance? And what that taps into is people and like cross-cultural studies show like Americans out the wazoo have this optimism bias under the right circum the the average person thinks they're above average at whatever it is you name them at. And depressed people, as long as it's something that's not emotionally like boiling the surface for their own personal concerns, they're much more accurate because they don't do this rationalizing. And they could say, no, actually they're gonna lose. No, actually, that's a horrible idea. No, and so they give very good advice while not taking it in the slightest for themselves. So it's not, <laughs> it's not actually a paradox. Interesting, similar sort of thing. There's a part of the frontal cortex. It's called the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. And when it's damaged, you have trouble regulating your behavior. You do impulsive, stupid things. And you have terrible judgments about stuff. But if somebody is asking you about what somebody else should do, what their appropriate behavior is, you're totally great. As long as these things don't have much emotional turmoil thrown in with it, you can sustain this brain damage. You can sustain major depression. And like, you're fine. You're even better than fine because you're not falling for the, like, everybody can be president stuff. But as soon as it gets close to home, that's where things go off the rails.